Hey guys, welcome to yet another Slayer Guard. In this Slayer Guard, we'll be covering the level 110 highest level of all blooms being the liver warts. So when you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Liver warts are a monster requiring level 110 Slayer, but it can be boosted up to using Build of Pies. The recommended stats are quite steep, but if you have level 110 Slayer, you probably have all of these stats. Here's a list of some of the useful things you can think about unlocking if you haven't already, but you don't necessarily need all of these, they are just useful. The Blighty Dive ability is useful for hopping around from Liverwort to Liverwort. The Enhanced Devoted Perk decreases damage. The Scrims of Vampirism and Vampirism Aura are strongly recommended, again, to save food and make these super chill, especially when using melee. A Charming Imp for collecting the charms, a Spring Cleaner for actually alking the noted salvage or disassembling it, depending on the version you have, it's still tied to for power slaying, and if you don't want any money because the standard drops are pretty bad, a scrimshaw of sacrifice can be used for 50% more slayer experience at the expense of all of your drops. Liver warts have a whopping 60,000 life points, so quite a large health pool. They are level 228 combat, they give a whopping 2,970 combat experience per kill, and a massive 3,338 slayer experience per kill, and these can only be assigned in a cluster task called Volblooms by Ikea Girl. On screen now are the basic and rare drops from the liverworts. Now, the main drops won't make you that much money, maybe a couple of mil per hour, not that much per task. But the main reason you want to do your Val Blooms or liverworts tasks is for that rare chance of getting the Blast Diffusion Boots, which are worth over 80 million GP. Another reason to do them is to get the Dinosaur Rib Bone and Dinosaur Tooth Drop, which can be used to upgrade your Anacronia Base Camp. On screen now are literally the most basic Slayer setups for every single combat style, using a high tier weapon and low tier non-degradable armor which can be augmented depending on your own preference. Now Liverworts are easily killed using all three combat styles, although they are weak to fire spells for magic. But I personally would recommend you do these using a melee setup as they can easily be completely destroyed using a Zerk rotation. So I'm going to be showing you guys a full melee setup, but you could also just use those setups. However, the best setup here is by using dual wield melee and going ham. So the recommended setup, of course, here is going to be Trim Masterwork, your Slayer Helmet, unless you've got yourself the upgrade. You want to have Cinder Banes because they are poisonable, a Luck Ring, maybe Armor Spikes, a Scrimsoft Vampirism, a Kiln Cape or Max Cape or Skill Cape, depending on what you have, a Vampirism Aura, because extra healing is always nice here, especially because these hit quite hard even through your ranged prayer. And for your inventory, again, just food, the monster drops that are worth picking up, a Spring Cleaner, Overloads, Enhanced Excalibur, The Seeds, a Ring of Vigor, a Replenishment Potion or Adrenaline Potion for the Zerg Rotation, and you're ready to go. Getting to the Liverworts is really easy from the Anachronia Base Camp Lodestone. Just follow the video as seen and you'll be good to go. Liverworts are very easy if you can dish out a lot of damage, as you will never ever see the mechanic happen. If you're too slow to kill them, however, the mechanic will happen after 10 auto attacks. This mechanic will then drag you in, and the Liverwort will shoot out some kind of balls, which will then reflect back to him, and because you're standing within those balls and the Liverwort, you will get hit for a lot of poison damage, which can't be negated by the Venom Blood perk. One way of countering the attack if you're caught off guard is by using the freedom ability and then quickly walking outside of the path of the balls and then the balls will hit the liverwort instead and do a lot of damage to the liverwort. Get wrecked, plant. Alternatively, what you can do if you're slow at killing these is by counting the auto attacks and then after the ninth auto attack, you want to use anticipation and then you won't get dragged in whatsoever and the liverwort will actually turn around and shoot the balls in the opposite direction and then they will hit the liverwort himself again. 
So after you know the mechanics and you know how to dish out a lot of damage, these are actually really straightforward and simple and the reward isn't really that great unless you get a rare blast diffusion boots drop or the dinosaur tooth, but the experience rate for the liverworts is actually pretty good. With magic using a noxious staff, torment, overload to steal tighter but no gothic staff or crazy invention switches, I was getting around 139 kills per hour, translating in 463,000 slayer experience per hour, which is not bad at all. With melee, however, I was getting a lot more. With melee, I was getting around 537,000 Slayer experience per hour, which is really good, and it's up there for the best Slayer tasks for experience, and this was just by standing in the middle of the free spawns, using my Zerg rotation, and you can definitely improve on this and get even more experience rates than I was getting. Oh yeah, but to be fair, I was actually using a Berserk Ore, which does boost your damage, so take that into account. So, you know, melee is good here, it's the best combat style to use here, but magic is not far behind. And with that being said, that's the end of this Liverwort Slayer Guide. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. And if you enjoyed this video found it helpful, please leave a like and maybe even consider subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.